Hello and welcome to our first review for the new Storm Absolute Power. This one will feature Angel and I, while the next two will feature Zach Rhodes, whom you met on the Sublime review, plus an additional new tester who will be joining us as well. The power releases on January 19th with the Summit Peak. There are links in the description to Bowler's Mart for both balls, in addition to the comparison balls you'll see later in the video. We're bowling on the Kegel Chromium Lane Condition that we always use for testing. It's a challenge pattern at just under a 7 to 1 ratio. 42 feet long, 25 and a half mils. That puts it on the heavy side of medium for both volume and length. It's not as easy as a house shot, but not as punishing as a sport pattern. Big shout out and thanks as always to Royal Crest Lanes for getting it set up for us. All it takes is a text and we have everything we need. Angel's layout is her standard four and five eighths by three and a half by two and a half. This is the same layout she uses on everything. Plus we also took her ball down to a thousand grit with Jayhawk Bowling Supplies Diamond Dust Pads on a resurfacing machine before finishing with Storm's Reacta Scuff to get it up to a 3000-ish grit sheen. Angel is our control tester because her game represents the medium speed, medium rev, average league bowler, and every ball she drills gets the same layout and starts with the same surface prep to establish a basis for comparison. My opening monologues about the ball tech are usually long enough that they resemble the type that precede a supervillain getting taken out, so I'll try to cut to the chase. The power is a straight up solid absolute. The R2S Deep cover formula is a cleaner version of Storm's flagship R2S, which is currently on the IQ Tour Solid and IQ Ruby for reference, so very similar strength but a little more length and boom. The strong asymmetric Sentinel core features a low 248RG, a high 050 differential, and an also high 021 intermediate differential. The lack of a flip block helps to blend the friction response to keep the ball from locking up or rolling out like some ASIMs can do, plus the shape of the core will result in the thumb hole on most typical layouts missing the core, if you have a thumb hole, uh, which will help to retain the undrilled numbers. The power at first glance resembles the absolute in several ways and not remotely in others. The shape is very similar, it's got the same kind of hook set look but that's continuous. The power of course is earlier but it's not really any slower. Again, Pearl Hybrid and Solid mean next to nothing when talking about different formulas, but within the same formula, Solids are typically the earliest and smoothest, while Pearls are the cleanest and sharpest, with Hybrids in the middle. So having a Solid version of the Absolute should on paper result in an earlier, smoother, and slightly stronger ball. It's definitely earlier, but the power still pops pretty well, and it's also surprisingly strong. Some of you might have already seen flashes of the Rubicon here too, which will perk some ears up, and let me just say you'll want to stick around for the whole video. While the Absolute was super clean and fairly responsive, the lower strength of the cover also made it pretty controllable and blendy. That's why regular R2S has stuck around so long. It's a perfect blend of shape and control, and it's also in the perfect strength zone for most league bowlers. The twist with the power though is that it almost seems a little angry. This is something I'll expand on when we flip over to my side, but it's just more energetic and forceful for us than the Absolute was. Angel really liked her Absolute, she still throws it occasionally, but the power hits the lane wanting to go and then it wants to shape and continue down lane two. The best way I think I can describe it is to say that it feels more like a solid virtual energy blackout than it does a solid Absolute. It's not quite as round as the Blackout, but the strengths and general characteristics feel more similar. Uh, there's significantly more dig out of the power than there was out of the Absolute. The Absolute would calmly glide down the lane and tip in towards the end, and the power is the kind of ball you let go of and think, damn, this ball's heckin' nasty. A couple short notes before we get into the comparison. The scent is blueberry orange cake, though it's mostly orange for us with very faint hints of blueberry or cake. Some people are sensitive to the scent, so wanted to put that out there. Uh, plus, it's a pretty different slash unique blend of colors for Storm, and we both like it a lot more than we expected. It has this vintage kind of throwback feel. Uh, the colors look good together and pop without being distracting. A lot of initial reactions, including our own, were that it was ugly, but once you get it in your hands, it has a pretty nostalgic charm to it that we both found we really actually like. To kind of put this in perspective, we're going to compare it to the Eternity Pi. On paper, they have similar core specs. Uh, the Pi's core is a little weaker, but Reserve Blend 901 Solid is significantly stronger than R2S Deep, so the Pi should ultimately be quite a bit stronger than the Power. Now, right away, I think you can see the Pi is definitely earlier and chuggier. It hits the lane wanting to slow down. It doesn't really do much, if any, revving. It just looks like a rock or a beach ball tumbling down the lane, and then it kind of firmly walks into the pocket. Now typically stronger balls cover fewer boards than weaker ones. The stronger balls use their traction to hook front to back, so they start hooking earlier and end up being smoother down lane. 
Weaker balls don't start hooking as early, so they're more responsive when they hit the dry down lane. The power is longer and more dynamic than the Pi, it also plays a little inside of it, at not a shock and doesn't mean a ton, but the key is in watching at what length down the lane the balls start to do what they do. Remember this pattern is borderline long and heavy, so there's not really any free friction out there for the power to cheat the comparison with. The Pi is the earlier, chonkier ball, but the power is a whole lot closer to it than expected or than it should be. This is good eye training too, the power doesn't fight to get down the lane nearly as much as the Pi does, that's why they say the cover is clean, means it's easy to get down the lane. And it seems that the power is going to fit nicely as a complement to the Pi and also be a near companion to the clone. Similar strengths, just different shapes. Okay, flipping sides and here's where you get to see the anger. My layout is my typical ASIM layout of 4 and 3 quarter by 3 and a half by 3 and a half. The pin is in the ring finger for reference. And I like to start shiny with everything because that tells me how strong the ball actually is. Everything hooks with surface on it, and while weaker balls get significantly weaker with shine, stronger balls will retain most of their strength. I took mine down to 1000 grit with Jayhawk Bowling Supplies Diamond Dust Pads first and then finished with a light application of Storm Step 2 compound. Step 2 is discontinued and no longer available, but I have gotten my hands on the rough and smooth edge compounds and will be testing those out soon. Anyway, bowling ball, damn this ball is heckin' nasty. I had to get it outside 5 to get it down the lane from the straighter zone and it really didn't want anything to do with the third arrow zone, uh, just much more strength and dig than expected. The shape was expected, but the strength was surprising. This is one of those rare cases where I really like the way something reacts, but it's not effective at all. Objectively speaking, it's pretty over under, it just doesn't look that good shiny. It hooks and booms, so from an optic standpoint it's a sexy reaction, but if you slow down and pay attention to what's happening, it's really just gold digging eye candy. I'm a sucker for a nice back end though, what can I say, and the booty on this thing's fatter than the sharp hay roll on the back of my neck. Getting into the final zone, it looks even worse, but that's kind of typical on the left side for me, it's kind of rare to have anything look good around 4th arrow. There's no track friction on the left side, so little to no stability, and with the shine on it, it's just too clean and sharp. If I give it a bit too much room, it doesn't quite make it back, and if I try to jam or shim it, meaning trying to keep it close to the pocket and not cover so many boards, it won't get down the lane, so it's time to get out the 2000 pad and knock that shine off and see what we have now. Apparently what we have right off the rip is a stuff 8, but to no one's surprise, I lost the first zone. Surface makes the ball stronger, earlier, and smoother, but I was already working hard from the straighter zone when it was shiny, so it just wasn't going to work with surface. Into the third arrow zone where it didn't work shiny, now we have a slightly different story. Since it's not responding so quickly or sharply, I'm getting blend now instead of the overreaction. Surface isn't always meant to create more traction or dig, sometimes it can be used to simply blend the reaction out. I refer to 2000 and under as traction grits and 2000 and above as shape grits because 2000 is kind of the tipping point. Under that is when you really see the traction increasing significantly, the ball gets a lot earlier and smoother. Over that, you're really just making the ball a little smoother without affecting the length or strength much. This is why I choose to use 2000 in the videos, because if I went with 500, everything's just going to dig in super early regardless, but over that, you're not going to see much of a difference. 2000, I think, is a reasonable adjustment that leaves the ball in a usable condition and still gives us information. The power really acts like a stronger ball because it's just a little earlier and a little smoother with surface. Again, I lost the first zone, but I didn't really have it when the ball was shiny either. And the ball reaction has improved quite a bit in the deeper zones, uh, but the general reaction doesn't look that much different. How it's reacting to surface is how stronger covers typically react, not weaker ones. Technically, this cover is weaker than the cover that was on the Nova. Now, if I put 2000 on it, it'd be digging in at 30 feet, and then when it shined up, it'd just uh, wave at me. But on the power, it's really just adjusted the shape a bit. I have pretty much the same look I did with it shiny, it's just more consistent and not as sensitive now. It's still generally a pretty responsive ball though, and if we're being really honest, even with the surface adjustment, it's still a little over under. I had the same experience with the Absolute though, the friction response just pushed it out of a usable window for me. This one seems more promising, but we'll see what happens over the next couple months and then we'll talk about it in the report card. Okay, I made you wait, but remember that I drilled a fresh new Rubicon to compare to the Tour Dynamics and that's what the power made me think of. Cleaner medium strength cover, asymmetric core, even though the Rubicon is more of a mild ASIM, the ball makeup in general is fairly similar. 
The Rubicon is a little earlier, a little smoother, and a little forward, but they're definitely in a similar strength and reaction zone, so that at least should give you a good idea where the power is going to fit, because the Rubicon was pretty popular and a lot of people had them. It's also a similar idea to the Codex. I think the Codex was definitely earlier rolling and smoother. Similar strength zone, but general reaction shape is different. The Rubicon for me is better from the straighter zones, uh, definitely more controllable, but the forward nature of the reaction did cause some hit issues, so it was easier to get to the pocket with the Rubicon, but not quite as effective when it got there as the power. I even had one very interesting hit that turned a four into a seven, damn string pins. But this is kind of as simple as it gets. The power is definitely in Rubicon territory, so if you've been looking for a Rubicon replacement or something similar, or just something asymmetric that's not crazy strong for when you need the torque or the shape without all the traction, this is your ball. Congratulations on completing the Absolute Power Training Course. Consider this your digital certificate of completion. You're now a certified operator and are cleared to receive on-the-job training, and the cool part about this is that unlike most heavy machinery, the whole point here is knocking things over and creating a mess, so have fun with that. Once again, the Absolute Power and Summit Peak release on January 19th. Have plenty more videos coming for both. The Peak review is also up and available, and links to Bowler's Mart are in the description. Remember, of course, that my code ROSEDALL10 will get you 10% off your order at checkout at CoolWick so you can dress sharp and stay cool on the lanes. Thanks for watching, and may the strikes be with you.